One of the new construction inventions in general construction now is reinforcement fabric. You don't actually have to use rebar. You don't have to use steel bars. So in things like structural slabs and structural floors, it's quite common now to have reinforcement fabric placed within an area. Now I'm in these structural plans right now, 000 ground floor. And if you remember in previous videos, we placed some area reinforcement in there, some structural rebar in there. And remember, we couldn't join it together with this slab here because there's actually a join between the two floor slabs there on the ground floor. So if we zoom in a bit, make sure we've got that right hand slab roughly central on the screen there. What we can do is we can place some fabric reinforcement in this slab here. Now, obviously, in the real world, if you're constructing this project, you wouldn't normally do that. What you would do is you would actually construct this entire floor and place the slab probably in either one or two parts. Make sure they're joined together with the appropriate joins and use the same reinforcement all the way across. You wouldn't mix rebar and fabric. I'm purely doing this as a training exercise just to show you how they work. Good construction practice, you would be consistent with the type of reinforcement you use. So go to our structure tab here. And there's the reinforcement panel, and there's fabric there. So we want a structural fabric area. So I click, come into the drawing area, and I select the slab, like so. And as usual, it grays out. I've got the drawing tools now here to place the area for the slab reinforcement, which is going to be my fabric. Again, I've got that pick lines option, which is excellent. So I'll set my offset of 50 again inside the edge of the slab, and it's locked already. So what I can do now is go and pick the lines that form the outline of where I want to place that fabric reinforcement. So I'm going to select that line there. Make sure the offset is on the right side of each line. So that one there, I want it on the inside there. And again, zoom in and make sure you don't get the grid line by mistake. Make sure you get the outside edge of the slab like that. And then we'll come down here as well and we'll zoom in again. And you want to get the outside edge of the slab, which is just there. Can you see that? Because there's a line there and there's a line there. You want that line there, just there, slab edge. Can you see it's actually telling you it's a slab edge? So you want that one there like that. So that's offset by 50 all the way around. What we can do now is check the major direction. So at the moment, that's vertical. There, it's those two lines there. Can you see there's the direction? That's fine. We'll use that as our direction at the moment. Obviously, if you want to change that, click on major direction and draw a new line, edit it. It's there, that line there. I don't need to edit it in this case. So I'll click on the tick to confirm. Lines cannot intersect each other. So it's saying that the highlighted lines currently intersect. So I click on show. And when I click on close like that, it'll zoom me in to where they intersect. So it's centralized it there. So if we look, we've got some lines that are intersecting. That's okay. We click on continue, zoom in nice and tight. And there you go. Look, they are actually intersecting. Now what I've got to do here is make sure that these lines work. So you'll notice there I've got a line there. I'm going to click on that line and delete it. Nothing that is a major problem there. I just go to pick lines again. And what I do is I make sure the offset is at 50 again and it's locked. And I select that line there. Make sure you get the offset the right side. So you touch it there like that. Now it places it. Can you see the cross there? I need to click on that little dot just drag that to there to make sure that it forms a corner. And I need to just check that on each one. Because you'll notice there's another issue there. Can you see? So again, click, drag, line it in like so. Now you might need to do this. You might not. It depends on how you place the lines. So you just do a quick sanity check. There's another one. So always do this. It does happen. The good thing is Revit will give you a warning every time. Now I've got the offset going again there. So what I need to do there is switch, pick lines off, and go to the line command here instead, and hit escape once. I don't want to keep placing offset lines. So I'll delete that one I've placed in error. Now I can go and pick that line, pick on the dot there, line it in with the end like that. So I'll just hit escape once, zoom out again, and everything should be neat and tidy now. So when I click on the tick, it works fine. So always do that sanity check to make sure that everything is OK. Now you'll notice my fabric is in different sheets. Can you see that? That's how fabric reinforcement works, because you can only get sheets to a certain size. So what it's done is it's done an autofill there for me. 
So if I click there like that, there's my sheets there. I can edit the sketch if I want to. And here, it's telling me what fabric sheet I'm using in the properties palette. So what I can do is I can change that and go and pick a different type. I might want to use A142M. Location is top of the slab. Lap splice position is aligned. And as you can see, 600 by 400 are the lap splices. So that's where they join up. And what I've got there as well, I've got different settings. So I can go in there and change everything that I want to in the properties palette. I don't need to change anything else. It's all fine. It's all placed. So I hit escape a couple of times and my fabric reinforcement is now placed. It's a new construction process and it's been in Revit Structure since Revit Structure 2013. It's one of the new tools available in Revit Structure. So that's how you place your fabric reinforcement in your Revit Structure model.